When it comes to personal development, our culture often celebrates those who are self-assured or self-confident. However, self-compassion might be a better way to approach success and personal development. For instance, self-confidence makes you feel better about your abilities, while self-compassion encourages you to acknowledge your flaws and limitations. And once you acknowledge and accept your flaws, you are more likely to view them objectively and realistically. This in turn can lead to positive changes in your life. Self-compassion is not the same as self-esteem or self-confidence. Instead of a way of thinking about yourself, it is a way of being or a way of treating yourself. Self-compassion involves treating yourself just like you would treat your friends or family members even when they fail or mess up. In general, self-compassion involves accepting that you are human and that you make mistakes. It also means that you do not dwell on those mistakes or beat yourself up for making them. When it comes to practicing self-compassion, there are several primary components that are essential to its success. These include being kind to yourself, just like you would be to a friend, being mindful of who you really are, flaws and all, and allowing yourself the freedom to be imperfect. Self-kindness. When you practice self-kindness, you recognize that all people are imperfect and that all people have imperfect lives and that you are kind to yourself when things go wrong instead of being harsh, judgmental, and critical. For instance, when something goes wrong, you, your first reaction might be to think, this should not be happening, or you might think, I shouldn't have this issue come up in my life. Everyone else is living perfectly happy, normal lives. But with this, but with self-kindness, instead of thinking, poor me, you think, well, everyone fails once in a while. You acknowledge that everyone has issues and struggles because this is what it means to be human. When you start to think like that, it changes the way you view life's challenges and difficulties. That opens the door for you to grow from the experience. But if you feel like it's abnormal or that you shouldn't, it shouldn't be happening, then you start to engage in self-blame. Another really important component of self-compassion is mindfulness. When you are mindful, you have to be willing to face your pain and suffering and acknowledge it. Most people do not want to do that. I have been one of those, those people and in moments definitely still am. Um, in fact, most people go straight into wanting to avoid it. I definitely, you know, put your head in the sand and not deal with it because uh, on a subconscious level, you might feel that you doubt in your capabilities to handle something. They want to avoid the pain and go straight into the problem solving. But when life throws you a curveball, it's important that you take the time to be mindful of how those struggles or feel failures make you feel and why they might have happened. When you are able to do that, you are much more likely to grow and learn from the situation. Another thing you need to be mindful of is your inner critic. Self-criticism can be very defeating and often plays on repeat in our minds. But mindfulness allows you to be aware of your shortcomings without passing judgments on yourself. The result is that you will recognize where you need to improve without the, this pressure of being superhuman. Imperfection. Once you can accept that it is unrealistic to expect perfection, it will feel like a huge weight has been lifted from your shoulders. It also helps you to realize that you, what you are experiencing is normal and human and you should not feel bad about it. Recognizing your imperfections can also help you feel more connected to others because you realize that everyone experiences hardships and difficulties. Remember, self-compassion is about being kind to yourself and realizing that humans are imperfect, including you. This also requires acknowledging that it's okay not to be perfect. Your flaws, your setbacks should help you understand yourself better, not make you stressed out or feel bad about who you are. There are so many benefits to self-compassion. Overall, self-compassion involves recognizing the difference between making a bad choice and being a bad person. When you practice self-compassion, you understand that making bad decisions does not automatically make you a bad person. Instead, you recognize that your value and worth is unconditional. Research has consistently shown that a, posit a positive connection between self-compassion and overall well-being. Additionally, self-compassion provides a sense of self-worth, but not in a narcissistic way, like 
self-confidence can at times. People who practice self-compassion also have more social connections, higher emotional intelligence, and greater overall satisfaction with life. They are also more caring, supportive, and empathetic. Research shows that while people who are self-compassionate have less anxiety, depression, and fear of failure, research also shows that self-compassion can be a motivator, causing people to improve on their mistakes, failures, or shortcomings because they view them more objectively. When it comes to being self-compassionate, the first thing you need to address is that voice in your head that is constantly critiquing you. Many times that voice is way too critical. For example, you may beat yourself up for a very, very little mistake. To be more self-compassionate, you need to recognize that voice and correct it when it veers off course. That doesn't mean you need to tell yourself how great you are, or though you could, instead talk to yourself in a kind, non-judgmental way, the same way you would encourage a loved one. And when you do, life will get a whole lot more manageable. Here are a few ways to begin practicing self-compassion and to stop being so hard on yourself. Treat yourself as you would a small child. Imagine that you yourself are a child and stub your knee or you fell down. Just talk to yourself in the manner that you would that child. It's going to be okay. How can I help you? We'll get through this. Anything like that. You can also think of a way that you would treat a good friend, a beloved pet, and then begin treating yourself accordingly. Number two, of course, practicing mindfulness. When we find ourselves caught in a barrage of self-criticism, it is often because we have gotten swept away in our negative storylines. Usually ones that often play and repeat are, you always say such stupid things, or you don't know what you're talking about, that's why nobody likes you and so on. This process of over-identification and giving in to our inner critic is usually accompanied by its counterpart, negative rumination. Mindfulness or the state of non-judgment awareness, awareness is the antidote to both. Number three, remember that you are not alone. If we can recognize our shared humanity and that not one of us is perfect, we can begin to feel more connected to others with a sense that we're all in this together so many people believe that they're broken or screwing up, when in actuality we're fumbling our way through this scriptless existence together. Self-compassion is about being kind to ourselves and realizing that the human condition is imperfect and that our flaws and setbacks should connect us, not divide us. Give yourself that permission to be imperfect. Giving yourself room to be human, to be flawed, sensitive, lazy, unproductive without having to define ourselves by those flashes of feelings and our ways of being. It's about cultivating a perspective over ourselves so we never shut ourselves down and never lose faith in our own potential just because we may fly off the deep end one day or uh, end up not coming out of our apartments all weekend. Give yourself a permission slip. Use it as a metaphor, which is this idea of giving yourself permission to make a mistake as a way of accepting however you are feeling and acknowledging that other people have felt this way before. And last but not least, work with a supportive therapist or coach. We know that our brains have the ability to learn self-compassion, but cultivating new patterns of thought or behavior takes effort. It's tough to learn self-compassion all on our own. Therapy provides a safe environment in which the therapist can help you notice your thoughts and feelings and have a realistic perspective of yourself and others and demonstrate empathy for you. In time, you will begin to internalize these skills and integrate them into your own life perspective. A big Finding a therapist with whom you feel safe and very supported is key. There are many ways to find a good therapist online uh, and there are different apps that can refer them or get a referral from a trusted friend. Your therapist should be able to see you through the smoke of mirrors of negative beliefs and find your way back to the amazing person that you've always been. Thank you so much for taking some time out for self-compassion today. Thank you so much for listening and watching and I will talk to you soon.